following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Precepts of Alchemy Jehovah Elohim Today, we are going to talk about the fourth and fifth Kabbalistic alchemical precepts. The fourth states, Know therefore this day, and consider it in thy heart, that Yod is Elohim in heaven above, and above the earth. Beneath there is none else. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 39 which explains how Jehovah Elohim is a multiple perfect unity. As we can see this unity is symbolized by the graphic of Ali Kampin or Adam Kadmon, along with the following biblical quotation. Elohim stands in the congregation of El, who judges in the midst of the Elohim. I have said, you are Elohim, and all of you are children of Elion, the Most High. Nevertheless, as Adam, you shall die and fall like Tifereth, one of the princes. Psalm 82. So, according to Psalm 82, Elohim becomes a multiple perfect unity in the congregation of El. This congregation is symbolized by yod he vav he and in the graphic by the four worlds of Kabbalah. The first is Yod, the head of Arikampin, or the Angel of Days, which alchemically represents the world of Atsiluth. In Yod, we find the congregation of El, as archetypes. The second Kabbalistic world is the world of Jah, or yod Hey, which is the world of Bria, creation. The act of engendering Yod, the archetypes, into Hey. The third is the world of Yetzirah, or world of formation the act of giving shape to those archetypes in our divine womb or spinal medulla, which is the Vav of Jah or yod he vav of the sacred name of Elohim, yod he vav he The fourth is the world of Asia or matter and action in any dimension. 
This relates to the final hey and to the full name of God, yod hey bav hey. Here, we are addressing yod Haba or yod hey bav hey alchemically in relation to the four worlds. So the head of Arikam Pin is related to the letter Yad, which is the first letter of the holy name of God, yod hey bav hey The letter He is added to Yad in the second world. The letter Vav is added to yod hey in the third world. Thus, when we reach the fourth world, we add the final He to yod hey bav in order to spell the full name yod hey bav hey at the very bottom of the tree of life. This is in order to show, as the Zohar explains, that yod hava is Elohim, in the heavens above and upon the earth. Thus, Elohim and yod hey bav hey are the same. From the alchemical point of view, we have to understand that the imaginary old man that we see in the graphic is formed by all of the elements or archetypes which are in different levels of development within the four worlds. In the head we find the archetypes, which are those divine elements that as thoughts or ideas in our head have the possibility of development through yad, hand, arm, phallus. In order to develop them, we have to descend into the world of creation, where we find the articulated word the mantra, Ja or yod hey, <coughs> which relates to the duality or the creative force of Bria, which is related specifically to Daat, the throat and heart of Arikampin. This is how we had to visualize Ja. The third is Yao or yod he vav which as we see yad on the right is related to the male force he on the left is related to the female force and vav in the center is always related to the spinal medulla that connects the yad or phallus to the he the uterus or throat of Arikampin. When we address Arikampin, we have to understand that the Ancient of Days is an androgynous being. The letter Vav in Kabbalah is related to Yesod, the sexual force, and to Tifereth, the heart. So Vav connects Yesod and Tifereth through the spinal column. This is why the central column of the tree of life relates to the letter Yad, the letter Vav, and to the letter final Nun. When we reach the very bottom of this image of Arikampin, we find the planet Earth, which represents action and matter in any dimension. Let us visualize the Ancient of Days always above the Earth, since Malkut, the Earth, as the final outcome of his power, is the element that represents the activity of the matter in any dimension. Thus, Arikampin is always above it, as we see through the different alchemical explanations that we are going to give in relation 
with the fourth and fifth precepts of the Zohar. These graphics shows us the relation of the triangle, symbol of the Trinity, with the four worlds of the whole tree of life. Thus, we find the unfoldment of the holy name, yod heh vav -Heh, in four parts. The names of the Sephiroth are written in, uh, with Hebrew letters because we had to learn them. Yes, we had to be familiar with these Kabbalistic letters in order to understand the alchemical development of Elohim within us. Let us now study the relation of the first triangle of the tree of life with the, world, uh, with the word Elohim. Aleph, Lamed, He, Yod, Mem. The word El... Aleph, Lamed, means God and relates to Keter, the first Sephira. The word Ela or Ele, Aleph, Lamed, He, means goddess or these, respectively, and relates to Chokmah, the second Sephira. And finally, the complete name Elohim, Aleph, Lamed, He, Yod, Mem, means gods and goddesses, and relates to Bina, the third Sephira. This is how the word, the word Elohim relates to Keter, Chochma, and Bina, the first triangle, the trinity of the tree of life. So we also see how yod he vav he the tetragrammaton, relates to the first triangle, the second and third triangles, and the bottom of the tree of life. This indicates alchemically that yod he vav he relates to keter, the head, tiferet, the heart, and yesod sex, the central pillar of the tree of life, and Malkut, our physicality. Understand that the letter He or of uh, Yod He Vav He is pronounced twice in order for Yad to make out of that through Vav, the central pillar, Malkut, the kingdom, the ten sephira, the very bottom of the tree of life. Thus, everywhere we look within the tree of life, we always look at the holy letters yod he vav he the tetragrammaton, namely Yod, Ja, Yao, yod he vav he which Kabbalistically is translated as yod Hava. El is also related to the Sephira Chesed, who represents our own innermost, our own spirit, our own angel, or our own particular individual God. This is why when we say El, we are addressing our own divine particularity. Yet, this El is just the Ruach Elohim, since our Ruach spirit is just an emanation of the Trinity above, which is named Elohim. We also said that El is related to Keter, which is the beginning of the word Elohim. This is why we always address Keter as the father of our father, or the God of our God. The multiplicity of the name Elohim is indeed beautiful. When we start comprehending it through the different aspects of alchemy. For instance, Ela, 
or Ele, Aleph, Lamed, He, means goddess or these. This is always related to the Sephira Chochma. In other words, these and goddess is related to the world of Bria, creation. Now, the Yod of yod he vav he plus the El of Elohim, which represents Keter, together, become Eli, <coughs> my God, in the world of Atziluth, and is singular. Yet, when El reaches Chochmah, which is the Son, Christ, and who is represented by the letter He of yod he vav he then El becomes Ela, or Ele, Aleph Lamed He. Thus, goddess and these are in charge of the world of Bria, creation. The syllable Yam, meaning sea in Hebrew, at the end of the word Elohim, relates to Bina. When Yam is alchemically combined with the syllable Ella, goddess, or Ele, these of Elohim, in Berea, it explains the mystery of Bina as follows. El Hayam, meaning the sea god, and Elayam, meaning sea goddess, and Elayam, meaning these archetypes in the waters. So from the alchemical point of view, the word Elohim is indeed marvelous, since alchemically, it encloses a lot. Elohim should not be translated as God, because in Hebrew, God is El, masculine. Thus, when we translate Elohim as God, we are taking Ella, goddess, and Ele, these children of them, out from the word Elohim. This is why it is written in Psalms 82. Elohim stands in the congregation of El, who judges in the midst of the Elohim. This is because each one of us has our own El, who resides within the innermost part of us. In other words, we find how these attributes of, or these archetypes of Atziluth, the first triangle, will express and develop in the second triangle, or world of Bria, through El Hayam, the sea god, and Ela Yam, the sea goddess. The male and female aspect of Elohim in Bina. This is why the spelling of goddess and these is Ela. The same since these, Aleph, Lamed, He, is plural, and Ela is singular and feminine. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 4, we read, these are the archetypes of Israel, the generations of me and Ma, the heavens and the earth, when they were created in Bria, in the day that Jehovah Elohim, Bina, made the earth and the heavens. So, Ele, these archetypes, in the world of Bria, 
will develop thanks to El Hayam, the sea god, and El Ayam, the sea goddess of Bina. These two alchemical aspects of Bina form Adam within the spinal medulla, which is represented by the letter Vav of yod he vav he This is why when Ela reaches Bina, she becomes Eloa in Yetzira. Because without the womb of Eloa, the female aspect of Bina, these Ele archetypes cannot develop. Thus, when these two aspects of Yam are alchemically forming Adam within the Vav or divine womb of Yetzirah, then Vav transforms into Yom, meaning day in Hebrew. Vav, the central pillar, Shushumna, or divine womb of Vina Elohim, called the right pillar Adam, the light day, and the left pillar Eve, the darkness night. Thus, when in them Vav Ida, the evening, and Vav Pingala, the morning, were alchemically joined, then the first day, Yom, dawned in the Shushumna, or downed in the Shushumna. These Aleph Lamenhe also relate to the archetypes that are named Israel which are contained in potentiality in the right and left pillars, the monad, Hesed and Geburah. This is why we utter the name Elohim Gibor. When we are doing it, we are addressing El, Hesed, and Ele, these archetypes that descend through Geburah into Yam the waters of Malkut, Egypt, from Keter, the father, Chochmah, the son, and Binah, the divine mother, who is also related to Yod and Mem, the final letters of Elohim. Yod and Mem, final, is read Yam, meaning water, sea, ocean, so when we study Elohim alchemically, we then learn how the Yad or Shakti potential of El, Ela, Ele, Aleph, Lamed, He, as our forces related to Yam, the water, or how the Yad or solar forces that fecundate the Shekinah, the Divine Mother, relate to the letter Mem, the water. So the letters Yad and Mem are indeed the clue in order to understand that in order for the Yad or solar forces of El, Ela, Ele to manifest in the universe, the water or Mem is necessary. And this is something that we can even prove physically since this planet will be a moon without the water. So the water is that element in any place of the universe that will put Ella and Ele, these generations of the heavens and of the earth, into activity. This is how alchemy and Kabbalah show Elohim in the universe and in us. Remember that physically we are at least 80% water. Thus, El, Ela, Ele 
will manifest in us thanks to the liquid element that we have in our physicality. If we take advantage of the creative water, which in Kabbalah is symbolized by the letter Mem. The waters in Hebrew is written Hamaim. In this world, we have a beautiful description of the waters. In the word Hamaim, the letter He means the. And Mayim, waters. <coughs> the second letter He of Yod He Vav He is always related to Malkut, the female aspect of God. This second He acts in our sexuality, and the letters Mem and Men finally are the symbol of water, while the letter Yad is the, in the center of Maim, is the male Shakti potential. This is why when we read the word Hamaim backwards, we find the two uh, syllables or words, me and ma which are the masculine and feminine aspects of the water. The two polarities of the waters. So, we always address them in plural because they are not a singular force. Since in the waters, we find masculine and feminine. This is what the Zohar states and what is very well hidden within the scriptures so that even those who study the Zohar do not grasp it. Me relates to Yad, the masculine aspect of the waters. And me in Hebrew means who. Ma relates to He the feminine aspect of the waters. And ma in Hebrew means what? Me relates to those waters in our physicality called the cerebral spinal fluids. And ma relates to the sexual fluids that men have in their prostate and women in their uterus. So we have me above and ma below. So this is how Kabbalistically and alchemically these two syllables, me and ma, hide the mysteries of Hamaim, the waters of Genesis. This is why it is written. Vav, the spirit of Elohim, the Ruach Elohim was hovering upon the face of Hamaim, the waters. The spinal medulla, Vav, is associated with the sexual alchemical activity of me, or El Hayam, the spirit upon Ma, the male and female waters of sexuality. When female and male are active, then the yad of the spirit of Elohim is between them. The two mems of Mayim, the water. In our physicality, Hamaim corresponds to our cerebral spinal fluid and genitalia fluid. 
Thus, in order to place the force of Hamaim, the waters, into activity, we need to perform the sexual alchemical act, which is the activity of the two polarities of Ma, of Elayam, Elohim. The Zohar states, the fourth precept teaches that the tetragrammaton yod hei vav hei is Elohim. That is, Jehovah has two polarities. Yad, Jehovah's phallus, and hei, Jehovah's uterus. Vav, Jehovah as male, and hey, Jehovah as female. Thus, Elohim manifests through these two polarities above and below, as it is alchemically written. Through Vav, you know that today. Through Vav in the Sabbath, El in thy heart, that Yod Hava is Elohim in the heavens above, Vav above the earth. Od, the witness beneath Ain. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 39. Vav means and in English. But we wrote Vav in order to point that Vav as male also represents the cerebral medullar system, which has the shape of the letter Vav. The key to uncover the mysteries of Genesis is the letter Vav that the masters of the Zohar explain, but in a very hidden manner, that not even those who are experts in comprehending the Hebrew language understand. This is because they are fornicators. Yes, in order to understand Genesis, we had to be alchemists. Listen. In order to comprehend Genesis, we had to begin from the point of view that the letter Vav represents our spinal column, since in our physicality, Vav divides our superior waters from the inferior waters. The Shakti potential of our two waters is symbolized by the two letters Yad. Yad means hand, arm, in Hebrew. These are found in the letter Aleph. In other words, we are symbolically speaking, or symbolically speaking, we are a walking letter Aleph. Since the Shakti potential of our Hamaim, the two waters, that we are explaining here as me and ma below are divided by our spinal column, the letter Vav. The letter Vav divides and separates the inferior waters from the superior waters. The waters above are represented by Adam, the cerebral spinal fluid, and the waters below by Eve, the genital fluid. Thus, by beginning from this alchemical point of view, we then can comprehend the alchemical waters of Genesis. These waters are very profound since within these waters are hidden the mysteries of the book of alchemy that is called Genesis in the Bible. 
Indeed, Genesis is a book of alchemy. So Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 39, alchemically states, Through Vav, our spinal column, our brain knows the mysteries of the At within each day of Genesis. In the throat, since the mysteries of that relate to the word, but within the Vav, that is the middle column. The central pillar, which in us is the tree of life, Thus, through Vav, we know the central pillar, namely, Da'at, the throat, Tiferet, the heart, and Yesod, sex. And through Vav, we know Malkut, the Sabbath. Physically and alchemically speaking, according to the Zohar and Genesis, we have two Sabbaths, or Malkuts. The first Sabbath is the woman, the night. The second Sabbath is the man, the day. Thus, when we work with that, which is the secret of alchemy, through Vav in the Sabbath, specifically when the Sabbath of man sexually joins the Sabbath of woman, and the two make one day. The Sabbath is the seventh day that, according to the seven days of Genesis, is Malkut, the seventh sephira. When counting the seven lower sephiroth from Hesed down to Malkut, which alchemically is always feminine. Thus, when we address the Sabbath, we are addressing Malkut, male and female physical bodies. Our physicality is our Sabbath, which is also divided into night and day, or feminine and masculine. This, how, this is how we have to apprehend the Sabbath. The verse continues, L in thy heart, because El, our God, has said, mercy, expresses his self through Tifereth, the heart. Thus, through all of these aspects, we understand that Jov Hava is Elohim, because this is how we associate the name Yod Hava with Elohim which is formed by a plurality of different divine elements in us. Elohim is a multiple perfect unity in us, inside of us. If Elohim is a multiple perfect unity within us, it is also so outside of us. Since if each one of us is a multiple perfect unity, then there are multiple perfect unities that form a big unity or Elohim in the heavens above and Vav above the earth. Comprehend that this unity expresses itself through the spinal column of chaste people and not through the spinal column of fornicators. The Vav in fornicators, the Vav in their particular earth or physicality is not alchemically awakened to the spirit. Therefore, their Elohim does not manifest in them. In order for our Elohim to be above the earth, physicality, we have to awaken the Jod or Shakti potential, solar fires within our spinal column, 
which are odd. Indeed, beneath Ain, the word odd means another. Yod, I mean, uh, Ayin, Vav, and Dalet. But if we remove the letter Vav from this word, then the word that remains is Ayin, Dalet, which means odd, witness. The letter Vav is in the middle of the word Ayin Vav Dalet Ad in order to indicate that Vav is the letter that brings the forces of the Ain Sof Or down through our spine. This is why Od, which contains the solar force of the Ain Sof Or, is beneath Ain, the nothingness. This is how Aur, light, descends from the Ain Sof into the tree of life. The vertical line, the Vav, our spine, in each one of us. Thus we see how this Ford, that is forces, which the book of Genesis calls Elohim, works alchemically through the tree of life which is a spinal column in us. So Elohim is a multiple perfect unity. If we think that God is someone there in the outer space and that we are here below, then we fall into the heresy of separatism, since God cannot exist out of his own creation since divine creation stands because of the will of God, which is the sexual energy that is always in movement. Listen, animals move God's divine creative energy down when they fornicate. Yet, alchemists move God's divine creative energy up when they do his will on earth as it is done in heaven. So everything depends on telema, willpower. We are illustrating telema with this beautiful painting of Saint Francis of Assisi, who was indeed one of the great alchemists who taught the doctrine that we are teaching here. In Italy, he is worshipped as a saint who supposedly did not know anything about alchemy. But despite these characterizations, Saint Francis of Assisi was a great alchemist. Since at, this, and at his time, alchemy was taught in secrecy. We are not going to talk about his private life but we'll only mention that he is doing in this picture, that is, he is looking at his forehead between the eyes, where we have the chakra ajna that relates to clairvoyance. It is through this chakra that we can see divine things, since at the root of our nose, we have the magnetic center where we find the atom of the Father. Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 1 states, Vera Elohim, which means Elohim created. But by separating the syllable Yam, Yod Mem, from Elohim, the sentence can be read as follows. Mi vera ele, meaning, who created this? 
Isaiah chapter 40, verse 26 states, Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who has created this? Lift up your eyes on high. Where? To the place whither all eyes are turned. There, at the magnetic center, the root of the nose, between the opening of eyes. There you will recognize the mysterious Ancient of One, Ancient of Days, who created these, and is the object of research. And who is he? It is me. Who? That is called the summit of the heavens above, not only in our physicality, but also in the four worlds of Kabbalah, since me relates to the world of Atziluth. For all things exist by his will, because he is the object concealed and invisible, after which all seek. Therefore, is this mysterious being called Who, and beyond him search in vain. Thus realize that me, who, is between your eyebrows, which is where we see our thoughts when we think or analyze, when we meditate, where we see everything through our third eye that relates to our pineal and pituitary glands. It is that part of our head where we see everything, even physically. Delve at the other extremity of our spinal column, where is another being known as what? Ma. What distinguishes the one from the other? Me, who, the concealed and hidden one, is he whom all created beings are seeking to know. But after all their efforts and endeavors, by the gaining of knowledge, they only come at last to Ma, the what? The Divine Mother Kundalini, Zohar. Alchemically speaking, under the light of Tantra, when we come at last to Ma, what? Which is the Divine Mother, the sexual force, then we understand that only through her can we go up to the brain, because she has to rise through the spinal column, which is represented by the letter Vav, or serpent of brass, with which every verse of Genesis begins. Let us imagine both ends of our spinal column and visualize that me, as father, is in our cerebral spinal fluids, and ma, as mother, is in our genital fluids. In alchemy, both fluids are called mercury. Thus, the outcome of both fluids rises as a serpent of brass in Baal, the spinal medulla. This is why it is also stated that Vav, the serpent, is the son of me and Ma. Yet, the book of Genesis a book of alchemy talks about the tempting serpent of Eden, which is always related with the left side of the spinal column, because the spinal column is represented by the caduceus of Mercury, around which are entwined the two serpents, Ida and Pingala. Thus, Ida is a tempting serpent. That relates directly to the lower extremity of the spine, where we find our sexual organs. 
This is why when we address alchemically the feminine aspect of Elohim, which is Ma, the sexual fluids, we associate it with Ida, which is located at the left side of the tree of life, and that is also related to the Sephira Malkut. Now, in the upper extremity of our spine, we find our brain, which is connected to me, the masculine spinal fluids, associated with Pingala, the other serpent. When the energies of the serpent, Ida and Pingala, are alchemically united at the base of the spine, we then awake the middle serpent, Shushumna, which Moses called the bra brazen, uh, brazen serpent. So in Genesis chapter 3, we find the tempting serpent, but in Numbers 21, 9, the, bra the brazen serpent. Jesus in Matthew 10, 16 said, Be wise as serpents. And in John chapter 3, 14, 15, Jesus said, and as Moses lifted up the brazen serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever has faith in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We have to carefully analyze everything related to the letter Vav in order not to fall into confusion because if we do not know the alchemical meaning of all of these biblical serpents, which are related to the letter Vav, we can then fall into mistaken interpretations. Like many of these readers of the Bible, who always associate the serpent with evil. If the interpretations of these religious fanatics were true, then the following teachings given by Jesus will be considered incorrect. Be wise as serpents. And as Moses lifted up the brazen, the brazen serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And what Jehovah Elohim commanded Moses in Numbers chapter 21, verse 8, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it, it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is beaten, when he looks upon it, shall live. Will also be considered incorrect, even though they truly are alchemically correct. The serpent, as a symbol, is always alchemically associated with our spinal column and nervous systems. Thus, only through the spinal medullar systems can we comprehend and understand the biblical serpents, which in Kabbalah relate to the letter Vav. In Taoism, Elohim relates to the three modes of energy named Shen, Qi, and Jing, and yod -He vav -He to the duality Yin and Yang. The Zohar states, the word Elohim joins yod he vav -He, Jehovah, in Bina, to show that both names are one and the same, and without distinction in nature or essence, as implied in the words. And Elohim said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens. Genesis 1.14 This is how it is translated in the Bible. But when we alchemically read, and Elohim said, which in Hebrew is, Va Yamar Elohim, we see an anagram that says, Mi Aur El Hayam, 
which translated into English means <coughs> who delight the sea god. Aur means light in Hebrew. In me is the Holy Spirit, who we are addressing here as the sea god, or the masculine aspect of Hamaim, the waters, because El Hayam is the same Elohim in Binah. El Hayam, the God of the waters, is Elohim. He has his yod or his solar force within Hayam, the waters of Ma, so that the light will become lights. Meoroth, in the firmament of the heavens. In Sanskrit, we will say, Narayana moves the prana within the Akashic waters of the firmament and within our sexual organs in order to place his shakti into activity so that the light will become lights in our shushumna as in the firmament of the heavens. Me and Ma are the yang and yin of Taoism, which are the two aspects of Hamaim, the Akashic waters, or space. Yin, or Ma, is the cold water, and Yan, or Mi, is the hot water, or lunar and solar lights which activate or act in the universe thanks to the water. In the Hebrew Bible, the word meoroth addresses these two lights. If we read the fourth day of Genesis in the Hebrew Bible, we will see that the word meoroth, which means lights, is written without the letter Bav. But in other parts of the Bible, it is written with a letter Bav in the middle of the word. The Zohar states, the word Meoroth should be written with a Vav, but it is written without the letter Vav. Meoroth is feminine singular in its form to show that through the letter Vav of Aur that is between Meoroth, the letters Mem and Tav, the light rises from Mem of Hamaim, the waters of Yod Chava Elohim, Bina in Yesod sex who thanks to the cross of the letter or the letter Tav is a unity and not a duality during the sexual act. In ancient times, the letter Tav was written as a Latin letter X, which is the cross of Saint Andrew. So when we see a letter Tav, we alchemically associate the letter with the cross. Even in English, we write Tav with the letter T, whose horizontal and vertical lines together make another shape of the cross. So the Hebrew letter Tav is indeed an alchemical symbol of the cross. Thus, thanks to the male-female polarities represented in the two beams of the letter Tav, and thanks to the waters symbolized in the letter Mem, the light, Aur, appears in any cosmos. This indicates that the word Meoroth contains the feminine and masculine lights, 
This is why these lights are represented by the moon and the sun. The Zohar continues. This is also symbolized by the letter Vav or pillar of cloud by day and the pillar or letter Vav of fire by night. Going before the archetypes of Israel, Tifereth, which is also represented by the letter Vav in the wilderness, represented the divine being, developed in the spinal medulla that has the shape of the letter Vav, who through the brazen serpent gives light and guidance to all the archetypes in the world of Malkut, Zohar. We see the pillar of cloud in this graphic that shows Moses talking um, or taking all of his archetypes from Malkut, Egypt, into the wilderness. This pillar of cloud is a symbol of the spinal medulla. When we start working alchemically with the forces of Jehovah Elohim within us, we discover that during the day, the letter Vav, which represents our spine, is a pillar of cloud. This cloud indicates that we are alchemically sublimating the steam from Ma, the waters of Yesod, or our sexuality that rises to our head or heaven. Then the cloud pours from heaven the blessings or waters of me upon our spine, as the waters that evaporate from the rivers, lakes, and oceans, and thereafter are poured down again onto the earth. Separate that spiritus earth from the dense or crude waters of Ma by means of gentle heat with much attention. In great measure it ascends from the earth up to heaven and descends again newborn on the earth and the superior and the inferior are increased in power, the emerald tablet of Hermes Trismegistus. So the pillar of cloud is a symbol of the alchemical mercury that rises up to heaven and thereafter descends newborn into the earth. That is the meaning of the pillar of cloud by day. It is an alchemical bath. Thus, if we alchemically transmute our sexual akashic fluids into energy or prana by means of gentle heat with much attention, we will see internally how the sexual akashic steam ascends from our sex up to our brain during our sexual alchemical work. Because the akashic cloud or steam rises within our spine the lunar and solar atoms of me and ma rise from our sexual akashic fluids towards our brain thanks to ida and pingala this is how that akashic cloud is made in us during the day yet remember that there is also a pillar of prana or fire by night as shown in the graphic. This means that when we are doing our alchemical transmutation during the night, then who, the light, the sea god, pours his prana or fire from above into Hayam, the waters of Ma so that the light will become lights 
made us in the firmament of the heavens and in us. This is in order to make light in the darkness. Understand that me, the male water, is the vehicle of Yad, the solar fire, prana, or electricity, as we already explained. The pranic fires of El, Ela, Ele, of Elohim, cannot emerge as lights into the universe and into us without the Akashic waters. Thus, this pillar of fire or prana is also rising in our spinal column or letter Vav, which is transformed into light that rises within our spinal medulla towards the brain. And this is why in Hebrew, Vav is spelled with two Vavs. And this is why the word Meoroth in the fourth day of Genesis is spelled without the letter Vav, as if saying. Understand that here we are talking about the pranic lights of me and ma of sexual alchemy within your spine, as well as in your heart. Differeth, and your sex, Yesod, all of which are represented by the letter Vav. If we are not performing sexual alchemy, how are we going to see those pillars? Sadly, the people who read these alchemical holy scriptures literally think that many, many thousands of years ago, there was a group of people who escaped from an evil Egyptian pharaoh, left Egypt, and walked through the wilderness towards a promised land. Thus, out of nowhere, for guidance during the day, a physical pillar of cloud appeared to them in a pillar of fire during the night. Other ludicrous people explained that such pillars were created by an UFO or cosmic ship from other planets in order to guide them through the sands of the desert towards a promised land. And all of this just because of the fact that they were monotheists and not polytheists, which is utterly ludicrous. Listen, only when we are Kabbalists and alchemists can we know the meaning of what we are reading in the Bible. When we go into the astral plane during the night, we see spiritual things thanks to our pillar of fire that shines in our spinal column during the darkness. But we, if we are fornicators, how are we going to have a pillar of fire in our spine to eliminate our past during the night of mysteries? Understand, these pillars relate to the letter Vav, in other words, to the brazen or the brazen serpent and serpents that alchemically are energies, forces in our spinal column that we have to handle. In the graphic on the left, we find the woman that represents the knight with the pillar of fire. And on the right is the man that represents the day with the pillar of cloud. And Elohim called the light day 
in the darkness he called night. Genesis 1.5. In Hebrew, the day is Hayam. It begins with the letter He to indicate that it is from the second letter He of Yod He Vav He, our physicality, that the light of Hayam rises to heaven. The night in Hebrew is Halayla, which reminds us of Dalaila and also Lilith. These names represent the feminine aspect, the left aspect of the tree of life that relates to our sexuality. The holy name of Elohim, yod hei vav hei is hidden within Halayla and Hayam, the night and the day. It is in our cerebral spinal nervous system, which is called the firmament of the heavens in the Bible, where we alchemically find yod hei vav hei because Jod represents our head or our brain. He represents our throat, which is a uterus where the word is gestated. Vav represents our spinal column, and the second He represents our genitalia. Let Yehi be lights in the firmament of the heavens. The heavens in Hebrew is Ha Shamaim. The letter Shin represents the fire of the Trinity or Elohim within Hamaim, that is, within me and Ma the waters above and below our spine, within our physicality. Likewise, Hamaim, the waters above, in the heavens of the planet Earth, contains the sheen or electricity or lightning within its clouds, as well as the electricity within the waters of rivers, lakes, etc., below on the earth. Thus, between me and Ma, the waters above and below, we find the sheen or fire of the sky, firmament, or heavens, which in us is a central nervous system. And Adam, me, call Ma, his wife, name Hava, Eve, because she is the mother of all. Hai, living. Let us study now Eve, or Hava as it is written in Hebrew. Hava is written with He, Vav, He. Beginning with the letter Het. Het, Vav, He. Thus, Hava is rooted in Haya. Het, Yod, He. Which means life. This is an alchemical mystery that we have to disclose. The shape of the letter Het is made with the union of a letter Vav and a letter Zayin. Vav is a sixth letter and is spelled with two letters Vavs. This is why Vav represents the, cer the cerebral spinal system of Adam, who was made male-female in the sixth day of Genesis. 
Zain is the seventh letter. It represents one of the vabs or ribs of Adam. In other words, it is the cerebral spinal system of Eve, who was separated from Adam in the seventh day of Genesis. Thus, when the Shakti potential represented by the letter Yad or the two cerebral spinal systems are joined by means of the sexual act, then Het, the eighth letter, is formed. Thus, Het, the eighth letter, represents the lunar and solar living polarities of Yod He, Vav He, Ava and Aima above and Adam and Eve below. The two polarities, Ava and Aima Elohim above, are represented by Yod He, which means Jah, the divine name of Elohim in Bria, creation. When Het joins Yod He, the letters then together spell Hayah, meaning divine life. The two polarities, Adam and Eve, below, are represented by the letters Vav He. When Het joins Vav He, the letters then together spell Hava, the mother of all living. Thus, Hava, or Eve, represents male and female genitalia. Hava also means to experience. Thus, alchemically, Hava Haya means to experience life and Hava Ja to experience Ja. Indeed, it is through Hava, the genitalia, the tree of knowledge, that we experience the tree of life. And it is through Hava, Eve, the genitalia, that we experience Ja. Hallelujah. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the two sexual polarities, you shall not eat of it as animals. For in the day that you eat of it as animals, by dying the lights may wrath in you, you will die. Muth in Hebrew means death. And in the middle of the word muth, death, just as in the middle of meoroth, lights, we see the letter vav, symbol of the spinal medulla, and of the serpent or carrier of light. Furthermore, the letter Mem represents the sexual waters, and the letter Tav is the cross. Thus, Muth, alchemically, means that by crossing our Hava, or creative sexual waters, as animals, we eat the light Aur of Jah that rises in our spine, or tree of life as the brazen serpent. Thus, through the animal orgasm, we lose divine life and find death. The book of Zohar explains this alchemically. In this consisted the scene of Bav, the serpent, Ida, that relates to the genitalia, which unites the divine trinity above and below. Yet, through the orgasm promulgated 
a multiplication of desire above Yesod, the doctrine of Lilith and Nehemiah, which has brought great mischief and strife in the world of Malkut. M men ought to this to sexual alchemy to acknowledge distinction below Hava in Malkut, but unity of Jah on high, that is, distinction of the divine being, Jah, from the world of fornicators, but unity of essence and nature through chastity, which when recognized and universally acknowledged through sexual alchemy, then will the demon of evil will and strife disappear from amongst mankind and have no longer power and influence in the world. This is also the occult meaning of and let Zain and Vav, the lunar and solar energies of them, be for lights, Meoroth, in the firmament of the heavens, to give light upon the earth, and it was so. Genesis 1.15 from Zohar. Thus the biblical serpent is not literally those creatures that live in the fields or forests. Yes, some of those animals are dangerous. Yet, some people have other uh, not dangerous serpents as pets. So please, leave those innocent animals, animals alone. Because the biblical serpent, as the caduceus of Mercury, represent the spinal medulla with its nervous systems. So alchemically, that is the serpent that we have to deal with, the spinal column, which is associated with three serpents. The trinity above is Keter, Chokma, and Binah, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The trinity below is the breath, the blood, and the water, sexual fluids. Lilith and Nahema are related to the doctrine of the many demons that constitute our ego. Yes, our egos are the opposite of the many divine elements that form Elohim that we are studying in this lecture. Egos are false creations made within our psyche through fornication. Lilith and Nahema represent many egos or idols within our mind, namely lust, anger, envy, greed, pride, laziness, gluttony, etc. Again, all of these negative elements are a plurality that we created within our psyche through the orgasm. So, by means of the animal orgasm, our sexual organ expels atomically the multiple perfect unity, which is Elohim, and absorbs atomically the multiple imperfect unity, which is the ego or Satan. Thus, Satan is inside us and is worshipped by every fornicator. Yes, Satan is a false Elohim, represented by a compound of defects, vices, errors, idols that everybody carries within their psyche. So instead of enjoying the perfect multiple or multiplicity of Jehovah Elohim within our consciousness, 
Our consciousness is a slave of the imperfect multiplicity of defects, vices, errors, idols that we created because of the orgasm or fornication. Such is the doctrine of Lilith Einahema, also called the doctrine of the many. This is why Jehovah Elohim stated, Thou shalt have none other Elohim before me. Thou shalt not make thee, through the orgasm, any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them nor serve them. In other words, do not become an egomaniac. This is from Deuteronomy 5, 7 to 9. People think that those graven images refer to the different alchemical, symbolic, wooden or marble stone sculptures that represent the solar deities or self-realized masters from different religious pantheons. Sadly, they do not realize that those graven images or idols mentioned in the Bible are their own psychological anom anomalies that they carry within their minds and hearts since they themselves created them by means of their abominable spasm, their filthy orgasm, during their daily fornication. So instead of our soul or psyche being one with that perfect multiplicity, which is represented by the solar logos Michael in the heavens of Tifereth, we are entangled within that imperfect multiplicity of eagles, vices, idols, evil images that all of us have and that represent Lilith, the black dragon on earth, Malkut. Thus, we are a multiple imperfect unity in Klipoth. There is not a concordant harmony within our consciousness or psyche, since she is divided into multiple psychological incongruences which are created when we utilize the sexual creative energy in the wrong manner. This is why it is written. And there was a war in heaven of Tifereth, the human soul. Michael and his angels, or Malachim, fought against the dragon, our ego. And the dragon fought and his angels, namely lust, anger, envy, greed, pride, laziness, gluttony, etc. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven of Tifereth. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world from within because Satan is inside and not outside of us. He was cast out into Glipoth, the bowels of the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Revelation chapter 12, 7 to 9. Thus, Meoros, lights, are absorbed by the spinal medulla of man and woman when they are performing the sexual alchemical act under the guidance of Elohim. This is how they develop Meoroth lights within their own psyche or heaven. Yet, if they follow Lilith and Nahema or evil will, which is their animal desire, sensation desire, then, instead of developing Meoroth, lights in heaven, they develop Muth, 
death in hell, since through the orgasm they eject the light and replace it with the shadows of hell, as it is written. And through the orgasm he drove out at the Adam from Tifereth, and he placed at Yesod, the east of the Garden of Eden, the Cherubim, and at as a flaming sword, which turned every way, left pillar and right pillar, to keep the way of the central pillar, the spinal medulla, or tree of life. Genesis 3.24 Thus, if we allow, if we allow our two serpents, Adam and Eve, our two polarities, Vav and Zain, to be controlled by Chava, our sexuality, Yesod, we then, through the orgasm, drive out at the Logos, Christ, from our souls from Tifereth. So the scene of Baal, the serpent, consisted in not knowing how to handle the energies of good and evil, or Zain and Baal, the Het, in our spinal column. Listen, when we talk about Baal, we address the spinal column which is divided into three nervous systems, namely central nervous system, grand sympathetic nervous system, and parasympathetic nervous system. The three nervous systems are symbolized by serpents and by the letter Vav. In alchemy, the letter Zain is taken as another letter Vav, since, since in Hebrew, Vav is a spell with two Vavs. Thus, Vav represents two serpents. So, we gain control of the caduceus of the god Mercury by acquiring dominion over these three nervous systems. This is how we control Zain, the tempting serpent of Eden that was wiser than any letter, Het, that joins two serpents, Vav and Zain, of Yesod, the field which Jehovah Elohim had made, Genesis 3.1. So the letter Vav addresses any one of these three nervous systems. Thus, unfortunately, we are slaves of Zain, or the creative force of Ida. And let the feminine and masculine Zain and Vav of them be for lights. Who is them in the verse and let them be for lights? They are the two letters Vav connected to Chaya, the phallus and the uterus, as the word show them. Alchemically speaking, and let them be for lights, relates to the absorption of the lights, Meoroth, through the spinal columns, or firmaments of man and woman when they are connected through the sexual act without orgasm. This clarifies the following alchemical statement given by the Zohar to those who practice sexual alchemy. The word Aur, light, is also a symbol of the divine Three unity, as its letters are in alphabetical sequence. Aleph first, Father, 
then Vav, son, followed by Resh, Holy Spirit. This, however, is not the case with the word Muth, death, in which the letters are found inverted, Mem being the 13th letter of the alphabet, Vav the 6th, and Tav the 22nd. Now, the word Meoroth is compounded of the two words, Aur and Muth. If Aur be taken from it, Muth remains, the symbol of death and separation from light. It was by these Mem and Tav letters that when joined to the Vav of Chava, the genitalia, became the, cor the, the curse of evil in the world because Chava Eve begins with the letter Het, life, and ends with He, the uterus, the mother of all living, the Zohar. The book of Genesis states, Vav Yod, these letters represent the man or spine and brain. Said to Zain He, this letter represents the woman or spine and genitalia, the woman. Ye, has Elohim said, you, Zain He, shall not eat of every tree, nervous system, of the garden, physicality? And Zain He, the woman, said, unto Vav Yod, the male serpent. We, Zain He, and Vav Yod, or Eve and Adam, may eat of the fruit, solar force, of the trees, nervous systems, of the garden, physicality, but of the fruit, solar force, of the parasympathetic tree, which restrains the instinctive functions under the command of the mind and that is related to Zain He, the spine and the genitalia, which is in the midst of the garden, physicality, Elohim has said, you shall not eat of it. That is, without my guidance from the pineal gland, you shall not eat the solar force of it, neither shall you touch it. Better said, neither shall you connect your genitals that relate to the sense of touch, lest you die. Vaviod, the male serpent, said unto Zain He, the woman serpent, You, Zain He, shall not surely die. For Elohim does know that in the day that you, Zain He, eat thereof, then your pineal and pituitary eyes shall be opened in the brain, and you, Zain He, shall be creator like Elohim, knowing good and evil. <clears throat> Thus, Zain He, the woman serpent, through the sexual intercourse, saw 
that the solar light in the parasympathetic tree was good for food and that it was bloodlessness for the pineal and pituitary eyes. And Nahemad, a lovable tree to make one wise. And through the orgasm, Zainhe took of the fruit or sperm from Bav Yod and Zainhe's ovum ate one. And this is how the Vav of Hava, Eve, the genitalia, drove out Aur, or light, from the spine in both sexes and gave Muth, death, also to the brain, her husband, with her. Thus, Vav Yod, the spine and brain of Adam also ate. Genesis 3, 1 to 6. By means of the orgasm or Hava, our genitalia, we keep driving the light, Aur of Elohim, out from Adam, our cerebral spinal nervous system. The sensation of the orgasm travels through Zain from Chava Eve, our genitalia, to our brain, Adam. In other words, when a man and a woman experience the orgasm, the male drives his fruits, sperms, out from his organism, and the female absorbs or eats the ejaculated fruits through her vagina. Then, both in the moment of the orgasm, send through their spinal column the darkness of Lilith and Nahema sensation desire from Chava Eve their genitals towards their brain or Adam such is the alchemical meaning of and she took of the fruit thereof and did it and she gave also unto her husband with her and he did Thus, the outcome of the orgasm is animal pregnancy. Since this is how animals reproduce, this is how animals multiply. So, orgasm is, is exclusively an instinctual animal sexual function. Thus, after that sexual misconduct between husband and wife, it is written, Thus, Adam, or Vav Yod, spine and brain, called Sain He, his wife's name, Chava, Eve, because she, Zain, within the letter Het, is through the orgasm, Am. Um, the mother of all Haya, animal, since only animals ejaculate life through the orgasm of Yodhe, phallus, uterus. Therefore, we all are livings or children of this sexual misconduct of Adam and Eve, that is, fornication through brain and sex. In Hebrew, Haya or Hai 
is a feminine word which means animal, beast, life, life, living. And living is hayot, which is feminine plural, which also means beasts. The Zohar continues explaining alchemically the process of how we fell from the light as follows. The woman, Zainhe, the spine and genitalia, through the serpent, the vav of Chava, Eve, took through the orgasm the letters Mem, water, and Vav from Meoroth, and with the sexual cross, the letter Tav, thus form the word muth death which then first entered into the world of malkut our physicality we have learned that when through the orgasm the letter mem water was left fav the symbol of life in Hava eve the sexual organ, the mother of the living, took its departure because the letter Mem, symbol of the living water, is the habitat of Chaim, solar lives. The woman Zain, through the serpent, Vav, of Hava, Eve, then took the letter Tav, the cross, and added to the letter Mem, water, as it is said. Through the orgasm, the Vav of Hava took from sex of its fruit and ate, and gave also to the brain, Adam, her husband, with her, and he ate. And thus form the word Muth, death. In order, however, to counteract its effects, it is necessary to add further to it the letter Aleph, whose numerical value is unity and symbol of the divine being. Muth, Memtav, then becomes Ameth, Aleph, Mentav, by which the word is saved. Ameth means truth. Zohar. This is why in John ver, uh, chapter 8, 32, it is written, And this is how you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now we understand that to know the truth is not, to, is not a matter of religious beliefs, as people say. Oh, I believe in the truth because I believe on what is written in the Bible. Listen, to know the truth is to understand the mysteries of Otz Hadat the tree of knowledge, which is alchemy, in relation with Ameth, which is the truth. Ameth. The truth. Aleph is alchemically related to our spinal column with the yod or shakti potential of yam waters or mem above and below tav represents the sexual cross by means of tav the cross we transmute the yod or shakti potential of mem the waters 
Thus, for Ameth, the truth, to make us free, we had to perform the letter Aleph, alchemically, within us. That is, to unite in our spinal column through Tav, the sexual cross, the two Yads, or Shakti potentials, of Yam, the waters of our cerebral spinal fluids above, and the waters or our geni genital fluids below. People ejaculate their sexual fluids through the orgasm. Thus, people are children of muth, death, because they are children of fornication. In the graphic above, we see the two serpents, Ida and Pingala, or Zain and Bav, entwined around the tree of life, or spinal medulla. Pingala relates to Bav, Yod, the spine and the brain, and Ida to Zain He, the spine and the sexual organs. Ida and Pingala are united thanks to Shushumna, which represents the medulla in the spinal column. The seven chakras representing the seven days of Genesis. In Genesis chapter 2, 9, we read, And in the uterus, out of the mist or sexual fluids of Ma, Adam Ma, made Jehovah Elohim to grow every tree or nervous system that is pleasant to the sight. Vav, grand sympathetic nervous system, good for food. Vav, central nervous system, the tree of life, also in the midst of the garden, physicality. Vav, the parasympathetic nervous system, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Regarding these nervous systems, the book of Enoch states, After these things, clairvoyantly, surveying the entrances of the north in the pituitary and pineal gland, above the mountains, spinal vertebrae, I perceived in that seven mountains, the seven cervical vertebrae, replete with pure nard, Odifer's trees, cinnamon, and papyrus. From thence I pass on above the summits of those vertebrae or mountains to some distance eastwards and went over the Erythraean Sea the cerebral spinal fluid. And when I was advanced for beyond it, I passed along above the angel Satil and arrived at the garden of righteousness, the central nervous system. In this garden, I beheld, among other trees, nervous systems, some which were numerous and large, and which flourished there, their fragrance was eagerable and powerful, and their appearance both varied and elegant. The tree of knowledge, but an sympathetic nervous system, also was there, of which I, if any one eats alchemically of its fruits, he becomes endowed with great wisdom. Endowed with great wisdom. It, 
the parasympathetic nervous system was like a species of the tamarind tree bearing in your sod, the genitalia, the tamarind fruit, which resembled either the uterus or the phallus, with grapes, ovaries, or testicles, extremely fine, and its fragrance extended to a considerable distance. I exclaimed, how beautiful is this parasympathetic tree, and how delightful it is appearance. Then Holy Raphael, Mercury, an angel who has with me, or who was with me, because I am an alchemist, answered and said, this, the caduceus of Mercury, is a tree of knowledge, of which thy ancient father, the brain, and the genitalia, Thy aged mother ate, aged mother ate, who were fornicators before creating thee through chastity, and who through fornication obtained knowledge of clipoth hell, the eyes being opened and knowing themselves to be naked, were expelled from the upper garden a tree of life or central nervous system. Book of Enoch, chapter 31. And the tree of life Otz Haim shows that the letter Vav is related to Otz, a tree, and that the letter He is related to Hayam, life and water. The word Hayim contains Haya, life, and Yam, waters. Behold how life is alchemically associated to waters. So if we do not control our waters, we do not control life. This is precisely what happened in the sexual act when the Vav of Hava Eve took through the orgasm the Mem or Yam, the sexual waters, and by doing so, she took life, which is within Yam, because life together with water is Haim in Hebrew. Thus, without Kabbalah and alchemy, People cannot understand these verses of the Bible. People are still arguing about the type of fruit that literally is mentioned in Genesis. Alchemists state that it was an apple, but people say that it was a peach or another fruit because there are no apple trees in the Middle East. Let us read what uh, Solomon wrote in Son of, Son of Sons, chapter 2. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. Stayed with me, or stayed me with flagons, conform me with apples, for I am sick of love. His left hand is under my head, and his right hand doth embrace me. I charge you, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, by the rose and by the hints of the field, that ye steer not up, nor awake my love till he pleased. So people think that the tree of knowledge was actually a tree from an orchard. They ignore that this tree is the alchemical symbol of the spine and sexual organs in our physicality. 
and that the fruit is the sperm and ovum, which contains the solar light as sexual creative energy. About the apple tree, Master Samael on Beor stated, The apple tree symbolizes the sexual force of Eden. When humanity ate of the forbidden fruit, they were cast out of paradise. The angel who governs all the elementals of this tree has the power to close our spinal chambers if we eat of the forbidden fruit. When men violated the laws of the Lord Jehovah, the elemental angel of this tree closed the sacred chambers of our spinal column and cast us out of Eden, where the river of the pure waters of life flow with milk and honey. Ignis Rose by Samael on Beor. Now we will easily understand the fifth precept of alchemy that states, Let Hamaim, the Akashic waters of me and Ma, bring forth a swarm of living souls, Nefesh Haya. We already know that Hamaim, the waters, are the cerebral spinal fluids above and the genitalial fluids below, which are divided by our spinal column. So let the waters of me and Ma bring a swarm of living soul is an alchemical statement. Notwithstanding, if we are not performing sexual alchemy, we cannot bring into our psyche those nefesh haya, living souls, which are eleyam, meaning these archetypes of Israel within yam, the sexual waters, that descend down a solar light from me into Ma, our sexuality in Malkut. Each sperm carries a living soul because it holds life, and we physically are a proof of it. We are, or we were, the sperms that through the sexual animal act penetrated into the feminine ovum. This is how we appeared in the physical world of Malkut. Thus, according to natural animal selection, we are the selected or chosen ones among the swarm of sperms that were ejaculated from our father's sexual glands during the sexual animal act with our mother. We are the ones who won the swimming race. The rest of sperms were lost and died within the feminine uterus. Yet, in the alchemical sexual act, we do not lose a single sperm because the Shakti potential or solar light or life of all of them is transmuted and sublimated towards our brain. Yes, alchemists absorb the light enclosed within the sperm and ovum during the sexual act. Such is the beauty of alchemy. The Zohar states, the fifth precept that states, let the waters bring forth abundantly living souls that have life. In these words are included three commands, having reference to the study of the secret doctrine, the multiplication of the human species, 
and circumcision on the eighth day after the birth of a male child. In this day and age, when we are spreading the Gnostic doctrine that was hidden in the past, yet now is open to everybody through the internet and through many other ways, the White Lodge is making three selections. The three commands addressed by the Zohar are related to the three selections. When this knowledge or doctrine of alchemy is studied by any person through the internet, through the Gnostic group, or through any other group that studies and practices the alchemy taught in the Bible, in the Quran, in the Mahabharata, in the Ramayana, in the books of Master Samael on the Or, or any other master of the White Lodge that teaches alchemy, then that person belongs to the first selection. The first command by the Zohar addressing the study of the secret doctrine refers to all of those students that study and practice alchemy and learn how to alchemically bring forth abundantly the nefesh haya, the living atomic souls that have life from ma, the fluids of their genitalia, up through the fluids of me in their spinal brain, into Tifereth, the heart, since they know the mystery of that or alchemy and Kabbalah. From this point of view, anyone who studies and practices this doctrine is a selected soul. Understand, it is not enough to study the doctrine of alchemy, but to practice the science of sexual alchemy or chastity. We can read all of the books of Samael on the Or, The Secret Doctrine, Isis on Veil by Madame Blavatsky, all of the writings of Max Handel and Rudolf Steiner, and make of ourselves a walking Gnostic library. But that does not change our psychological misery unless we practice what we learn in these studies of alchemy and Kabbalah. If we are studying this doctrine, if we know the science of alchemy, but we do not bring forth abundantly from our genitalia towards our brain and heart, the nefesh haya, living souls that we have in the half soul of life, then we are just cheating ourselves. We might think that just because we believe in the sacred scriptures, or because we were born within a certain religion, or because we belong to a certain sect or esoteric group, we will eventually be in heaven or in the world to come. People state, if you come with us, you will automatically be one of the chosen ones, and you will be saved. We state the same thing. But we also state it is not enough to study the doctrine. We have to practice it. <coughs> Gnosis studies all religions because in them we find the same alchemical principles. So we are not exclusivists. Indeed, the doctrine that we study here is written in many sacred books. Yet it is written in code as we are showing it to you. Listen. We need to bring forth abundantly from our genitalia towards our brain and heart the nefesh haya, living atomic souls that have life. If we want to belong to the first selection, when we practice it, we easily understand it and see it hidden between many religious or philosophical allegories. Yet, if we do not practice what we learn, know, and preach, we just become parrots, utterly blah, 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 blah. Yes, only repeating what others say. People ask us, what do you always emphasize the alchemy of Genesis in the Bible? 
Why not the Quran, for instance? We answer, it is because we do not live in the Middle East or in those countries that preach the Quran. We live in America, and most of the Americans, whether from the North, Central, or South, read the Bible, which is the sacred book for the Western world. Christians, Jews, Muslims read the Bible, but do they understand the Bible? Do they study the Zohar and study these alchemical precepts? Do they understand these precepts? We do not know. What we know is that we understand them. And this is why we share this knowledge with you of the Zohar. And for all of those people that eventually will study and listen to our lectures. Thus, if we listen to these lectures, they will understand that what they believe must be practical. If they do not practice chastity, if they do not transmute their living souls from the creative waters of their physical bodies, they are wasting their time. They may believe 100% in what they read, but if they do not practice it, if they do not practice it, that is worthless. The Zohar states, the one who addicts and gives himself up to the study and acquisition of esoteric science of alchemy and practice it, becomes eventually united to Tifereth, his higher self, and equal to Malakim. Thus it is said, Bless you, bless Yod his Malakim, his Gebura, who fulfill his word by obeying the voice of his word. Psalm 103, verse 20. In English, lay people have translated the word Malachim as angel. Since the hierarchy of beings from the heavens of Tifereth, the human soul, in the world of Yetzirah, are called Malachim in Kabbalah. Those alchemists, through initiation, eventually become united to Tifereth. This happens in the fifth initiation of Mayor Mysteries. This is how alchemists become Malachim. This is why we say, through initiation, we become eventually united to Tifereth, because there are some Kabbalists who believe they are already Malachim, simply because they study the Zohar, the Kabbalah, and only fornicate on Saturdays. Listen, fornicator Malachim do not exist. Some fanatic people or religious orthodox from Judaism believe that they are the angels or Malachim on the earth because they study the Zohar. Some sects of Christianity believe that they are saved because they rest on the Sabbath. But are they in chastity? Do they transmute their sexual energies? Do they understand the mystery of the Sabbath? They might rest on Saturday, the seventh day of the week. But do they know that the woman is the Sabbath? because she was created on the seventh day? Do they know that to rest on the Sabbath means to practice sexual alchemy on the Sabbath? Listen, if they have a lot of children, it is because they are not practicing the main alchemical precept of the Sabbath or the seventh day of Genesis that states, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, you shall surely die. Did they fulfill alchemically any of the seven days of Genesis? 
Did they alchemically reach the level of Malachim in Tifereth? If the answer is no, they do not, then they are just liars. Them which say they are apostles and are not, and has found them liars, because they are not alchemically practicing a myth, the truth. So let us not interpret the Bible and the Zohar at the dead letter. So do not think, because we reunite every Saturday, we are already selected, and thus we are the angels of the earth. If we study and practice alchemy, we might eventually become an angel of the earth. In other words, a malachim, a master of the fifth initiation of major mysteries, because we had to study the sciences of Kabbalah and alchemy or the tree of life and the tree of knowledge in order to practice them. But to think that we are angels on the earth just because of the fact of reading and misinter misinterpreting the Zohar every Saturday is to swim in very shallow waters. We have to dive within Hamaim, the profound waters of Yam. And for that, we have to avoid the orgasm and to transmute our sexual energies during the sexual act in order to bring forth abundantly from our genitalia towards our brain and heart the Nefesh Haya, living atomic souls that have life. The Sohar explains this very well, but we have to meditate on his explanations. Otherwise, we might fall into misapprehensions. When we do not practice sexual alchemy, we always fall into misinterpretations. So let us study the Zohar, but let us also be chaste. That is, let us practice sexual alchemy. The students of the secret doctrine are called to be his malachim upon the earth, as intimated in the words. Let Hamaim, the sexual waters, bring forth through sexual alchemy a swarm of nefesh haya, living souls that have life, and fold of malachim that may fly in the tif in Tifereth, the sixth dimension, above the earth, Malkut, in the open firmament of the heavens of Yetzirah. Genesis 1.20 In Malkut, the bottom of the central pillar of the tree of life, we find the students of the secret doctrine. And above Malkut, we find the alchemists in Hamaim, the waters of Yesod, which are the living souls that have life because they do not fornicate. And above Yesod in Tifereth, the sixth dimension, we find the fall of Malachim that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of the heavens of Tifereth. So in Tifereth, the alchemists can talk with the angels, as the prophets that talk with the angels and said, last night I talked with an angel, and he said this and that, etc. And since I am a prophet, a malachim, or an alchemical master of the fifth degree, I can talk with the angels. Do you want to talk with Master Samael on Veor, the angel Samael, who wrote all of the books that we have? Well, that is easy. Meditate, and through a Samari, enter the world of Tifereth, and there you will find him. We can also talk with him in the world of Hod or Netzach, in the fifth dimension. 
Thus, project consciously into the astral plane and out of your body in the astral plane, call him, and he will come and talk to you. But in Tifereth, the sixth dimension, only through a Samadhi, or if you are already at the level of Malachim, you might approach him and say to him, Master, my respects to you. I am a Malachim of this world, but you are a very high Malachim, and I want to receive your doctrine here in the Mount of the Olives. He might answer to you, Yes, let us reunite here in the Mount of the Olives, the sixth dimension, and I will teach you more about the fourth path since now you created, through alchemy, your causal body. <coughs> but they that wait upon Jothaba shall renew their sexual strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40.31 Those who always transmute their sexual force shall always renew their sexual strength and become strong as Samson. Thus they will be able to go throughout the world as masters and exponents of the truth that saves and purifies the souls and enlightens the minds of humans, as Master Samael did, who taught what he practiced and explained what he read. If we teach what we read, we must unveil what is alchemically written, which is something practical. Thus, the words and fall that may fly above the earth refer to students of esoteric teachings calling inscription waters, because it is through their transmuted sexual waters that they wait upon Joth Chava. They are able to mount up to the great fountain of divine truth and partake of its living waters, that it might be so with him. David prayed, A clean heart prepare for me, O Elohim, and a right spirit renew within me. Psalm 51.10 Meaning, incline and open my heart for the study of the mysteries and occult meanings of the word, and renew me with a right spirit. Or in other words, as a letter Aleph, let my higher and lower nature become purified and unified. Aleph, as a symbol of the air, is the breath, the spirit of Elohim that hovers in the spine above the superior and inferior waters. Aleph, the breath, unifies both waters through sexual alchemy. Now, the second command in the fifth precept is the multiplication of the human species. How do we understand this second command? We might say, well, the waters that bring the living souls are the seminal fluids that bring the sperms and ova that are related to the multiplication of the species, right? Ron. This is how the fornicator ignoramuses interpret that verse of Genesis. They say, well, we have to also multiply physically since it is written and Elohim blessed them, and Elohim said unto them, Grow and multiply. And the Zohar states, The second command relates to the multiplication of the human species. Sadly, 
they do not read what they are reading. Since Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, is related to the sixth day, which relates to Geburah Neshama, the spiritual soul, when counting the sephiroth from the bottom to the top. Therefore, in order to work in Geburah, we have to first establish ourselves in Tifereth. Thus, it is written, and Elohim blessed them, the Malachim. And Elohim said unto them, the Malachim, grow and multiply and replenish the earth, your physicality, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish. Sperm and ovum of the sea, Yesod, and over the fall of the air, Hod, Netza, and Tifereth, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth, Malkut. This is what the multiplication of the human species means. It is not to physically multiply as the animals do. In Hebrew, human is Enosh, or Adam. Yet, ignoramuses believe that they are already humans. Listen, a Malachim is a true human being. He's an angel. And alchemist that is blessed by Elohim. And that talks to Elohim. This is why it is written, And Elohim blessed them. And Elohim said unto them, the Malachim. Thus, if we are not Malachim, we are only humanoids or intellectual animals. And that's all. Thus, multiplication of the human species is multiplication of human species. No animal species. We multiply our human principles or archetypes when we sit down and meditate. And when we comprehend our animal defects and annihilate them. We are then blessed by our own Elohim who multiply the human level in us. Because the human species are represented by, uh, in the Bible by the 12 archetypes or tribes of Israel that descend from Tifereth into Malkut, in those who are already at the human level, those who are the members of the second selection, are those who fly with their astral, mental, and causal solar bodies in the open firmament of the heavens. The alchemists of the fifth degree, members of the second selection, have to liberate, as Moses did in the Exodus, all of those archetypes that are named Israel and that are trapped in Egypt within their ego. Israel represents the consciousness that we have to liberate from the tyranny of Lilith and Nahema, our animal mind. So this is how humans are blessed by Elohim. And this is how they perform the multiplication of the human species within their respective psyches. Thus, what we have to do first is to alchemically grow to the level of Tifereth a human being, and thereafter to multiply the human species. Do not fall into the stupid mistake of thinking that the second command the Sohar addresses is related with having children on the earth, because we do not need a written command in order to have children on the earth. 
since even irrational animals multiply through the orgasm. Thus, to justify fornication by, by misinterpreting the statements of Sohar uh, is ludicrous. Now, the third command in the fifth alchemical precept is circumcision on the eighth day after the birth of a male child. People who interpret this command literally circumcise any male child on the eighth day of his birth. But let us study this third command alchemically. The myth about the death and resurrection of Osiris illustrates this command very well. Osiris was killed by his evil brother, Seth, and resurrected by Isis, his wife, with the help of Toth Mercury. Osiris' body is cut into 14 pieces by Seth and is scattered throughout Egypt. Isis set out to look for the 14 pieces, but she was able to find and put together only 13 of the 14 pieces. She was unable to find the 14th and most important part, Osiris' penis. Instead, she fashioned a phallus made out of gold and sang a mantra around Osiris until he came back to life. Thus, Osiris resurrected and through his phallus made out of gold, impregnated Isis, who conceived her male child, Horus. Because of this alchemical experience, Osiris became lord of the psychological dead and lord of resurrection. This might, I mean, this myth is associated with the mystery of circumcision because resurrection happens in the eighth alchemical day. The male child Arus, who is Tifereth, resurrects in Osiris, and Osiris, Chokma, resurrects in him. The alchemists, after performing the alchemical multiplication of the human species within his human soul, finally fulfilled the seventh day, which is associated to Chesed, and become psychologically ready to enter into Bina, that relates to the eighth day. In order to enter into Bina and resurrect, the alchemist has to pass through a great abyss that is located between Chesed and Bina. This abyss is associated to the Sephirah Da'at. It is very deep abyss as is shown in the graphic of the Tree of Life. In that, we find Osiris and Isis, Shiva and Parvati, or Ava and Aima, Elohim Bina. It refers to resurrection and is associated with the eighth day, Malkut, the first, Yesad the second, Hod the third, Netzad the fourth, Tifereth the fifth, Geburah the sixth, and Hesed the seventh. And eight, the duality of Cyrus Isis of Bina in Da'at. So from Hesed to Bina, the alchemist has to pass the deep abyss of Da'at and the alchemist cannot pass through that abyss if he is not completely psychologically dead. Not even an atom of lust can exist within our psyche. This is how in the eighth day, Ava and Aima Elohim, Bina, conceived the child Aurus within our psyche in that, without any speck of animal lust. This is what circumcision of the eighth day after the birth of a male child means. 
Thus, when we, the alchemists, enter into the eighth day, that means resurrection. The alchemist enters into the promised land or is selected as a seed for the golden age. In this day and age, we will say, it is ready a seed for a new progeny. The sixth root race. Resurrection is related to the third selection. Let us study these three selections cabalistically, alchemically, initiatically speaking. First selection, the study and practice of the secret doctrine. Here is where the devotees begin to study and practice alchemy and through five initiations reach the level of Tifereth. Second selection, the multiplication of the human species. Here is where, as alchemists, we gather all of the archetypes of Israel within Tifereth, our human consciousness. Third selection, circumcision on the eighth day after the birth of a male child. Here is where, as alchemists, with our animal residues, we resurrect as Aurus in Bina. Circumcision means that sex is no longer performed according to your whim, but only under the will of Jehovah Elohim. The members of the third selection do not have lust in their psyche. They are resurrected masters who are completely chaste. In order to pass from Geset to Binah, the alchemist has to physically die and resurrect because the physical bodies that we have in the first and second selections are bodies that were conceived by our physical parents through fornication. Physical death and resurrection was the alchemical process that Master Samael on the or passed in 1977. So from the seventh to the eighth day, the eagle or Holy Spirit swallowed him. This is how he became the first member of the third selection of this new exodus that he is commanding, where we find millions that belong to the first selection. We can count with the fingers of one hand a small group of members of the second selection. Thus, to become a member of the third selection implies a lot of alchemical work. It is very hard. So this is what it is to become alchemically circumcised by Jehovah Elohim, Binah, who completely eliminated animal lust, animal desire, in all of the seven Kabbalistic levels of the being, in each of the seven days of Genesis, or seven lower sephiroth of the tree of life, as the seventh day states. These are the archetypes of Israel, the generations of me and Ma, the heavens and of the earth, when they were created in Bria, in the day that Jehovah Elohim, Binah, made the earth and the heavens. Thus, Jehovah El Hayam formed Adam from these archetypes, the dust, the mist of Ma, Adama, the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And Adam became a Nefesh Haya, a living soul. And Jehovah Elohim planted a resurrected physical body or garden is war in Eden, the fourth dimension. And in there, in the promised land, he put Adam, whom he had formed in Malkut, the Sabbath. <coughs> After this process in Sabbath, in the seventh day, we enter the eighth, where sex becomes a function 
strictly under the command of our inner Jehovah Elohim. If these resurrected masters break that law, if they perform the sexual act by their own whim, then they become fallen angels. Understood? Do you have questions? So since we were just talking about the selections, um, so the, the, the first selection, that's, uh, that, that's clear. And, and the third selection, that's, that's pretty obvious. However, um, in the second selection, we often talk about, uh, we, we, we refer to the 50%. And um, I've heard the second selection referred to as eliminating 50% of the ego. I've also heard the second selection, like today you were talking about the second selection related to um, uh, Malachim. Uh, yeah, developing the causal body, which is 50% of the tree of life. Exactly. The tip of life. Um, is, uh, is, is, there, is there a unity between those two uh, 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 views of the second selection? Like, do you need to eliminate 50% of the ego in order to develop the causal body? Or is, is this distinct? Let's talk alchemically here. Okay. When somebody reaches Tifereth, it still has ego. Yes. So it's animal and it's human at the same time. So it's half and a half. It has namus. Ah. If he doesn't disintegrate the ego, they will remain as has namus, which are dangerous, right? That's 50%, alchemically, Kabbalistically speaking, right? right? Means 50. It doesn't mean that he annihilated the 50% of the ego. No, he reached the half of the half of the time. Kabbalistically speaking, yeah? You, at, at one point you uh, pointed out that Muth is death, is translated as death, and that if we add the Aleph to it, that it's a meth, and that equals the truth. In the, uh, in the secret doctrine, HPB talks about when the Shemites were exiled out of India and that they, and she, she points out that one of the ways that you can tell that this, that this happened is, is the word uh, Abraham, Abram, and she said she translated A as being not, so they are not Brahmin. Yeah. So could you say that that Ameth is not death? Yeah, well, we will say it better. Muth is not a meth. That's better. Okay. You know? Because a meth is the truth related with a letter Aleph, which unites the two, the two waters. If you take the letter Aleph there, and then it's only Muth, which means death. I mean, you take the light, which is in your spinal column, the two waters, right? Every fornicator. It doesn't work with the two waters of the letter Aleph. They are excluded from Aleph. So therefore, they are muth, death. Right? That is, to, to be now already with Abraham, of course, uh, if we translated that at A without Brahma, right? Uh, it's from the point of view of Blavatsky, we will say, yeah, that the religion of uh, Abraham was completely uh, separated from the Hindu in the way that the Hindus, the India and China, were the outcome of the second uh, sub-race, of the Aryan race. And Abraham formed part of the third sub-race, related with Egypt, and that's why Abraham was born in the city of Ur, but traveled to Egypt, because his mission was to organize and to start the third sub-race of the Aryan race, which developed, of course, in Egypt, in Jerusalem, in Persia, which are lands completely out of India, which belongs to the second sub-race of the Aryan race. We will say that is the development of the light of Brahma in different aspects, right? Because every uh, sub-race or every re region developed the same doctrine in different octaves. 
And obviously, as we, we read Genesis, where Moses explains about Abraham, Kabbalistically, is beautiful, right? But that is a doctrine completely different in the explanation of Kabbalistical writing of the Mahabharata and all of those writings which are in India, which also hide the same truth, but in different way, because for that we had to study Sanskrit. Madame Lavasi always understood that. And for that statement, I always understood that Abraham came from the second sub-race, not literally meaning from India, right? But from the outcome of the second sub-race into the third. Like for instance, we are now in New York forming the seventh sub-race of the iron race. But we are taking from other sub-races the doctrine in order to make something different, right? Samael on the earth, physical body, was born in Colombia in the sixth sub-race. And it, that is the source that we take in order to form the seventh. This is how we have to understand the, uh, the meaning in relation with alchemy and Kabbalah. Do you have another question? Can we go back to the slide where we were talking about Mayo Rot with, uh, without the... Uh, the Bob? Mm -hmm. the, um, so when you well, if in our discussion of that, you you sort of imply that the yeah here, the it was that one yeah that the the absence of the vav was uh, the the was sort of the conspicuous absence of the vav was uh, to to point to, to highlight the importance of the vav mm -hmm. uh, in this particular uh, instance of uh, of lights. Um, so it's 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 not that the, the Bob was missing in this point. It's not that the, uh, the 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 importance of the spinal column, the sexual energy, is is missing from the, the lights that are in the in the firmament. It's just to uh, to, to indicate to us that it's to indicate to us that through the letter Vav is how we build those lights. Yeah, that is the main. And also, because Kabbalistically, that relates to the second day of Genesis as well. And when one reaches the second day of Genesis, the second initiation, mm -hmm. when one works with the Akashic waters, the forces of the waters there, positive and negative, still the waters are not pure. They are impure. And the letter Vav is what makes the, letter, the word Aur. So if that's taken out, it means that anybody that has studied the secret doctrine like us could reach the first initiation, the second initiation, but not for that is that, oh, you are a malachim. No. Your waters are not pure yet because the letter Bavi is not there. And that's why in the book of Genesis it is written, and, it, and God saw that it was good. Right? But the second day it doesn't say that. It's the only day that says it was not good. Why? Because even though you are doing the transmutation, like in us, for instance, we are transmuting the sexual energy. We are working with chastity. We are doing practice, etc. But the letter Bob is not there. We are making light. But Lilith is in us. Nahema is in us. A lot of egos in us. So even though we are working with the two waters, that Meoroth, is missing the letter Vav. Hmm? And we have to work very hard with the letter Vav, in other words. It doesn't mean that we don't have the spinal column there. Yeah. We have it. <laughs> but it's not completely clean. Right? Because all initiations, everything starts with the Vav. Imagine the sperm. What is a sperm? It's a letter Vav moving to the oven. That's the letter Vav. That's the beginning. Entering into the, into the matter, which is the earth, the oven. And then we multiply. We are here in this physical world, but we are Vavs. All the movements that we do, thanks to the letter Vav, to the spinal column. We walk thanks to the spinal column. If we damage the spinal column, 
even if we have strong legs, beautiful legs, we cannot walk. So we walk not because of the feet or the, or the legs. We walk because of the spinal column. And you know that. Break your spine and you are dead, alive. So take care of your spinal column. And take care of the bottom of it and the top of it. The two waters. And understand the fourth and the fifth precepts of alchemy of the Zohar. Do you have other questions? Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at Gnostic